Shoulder pain is quite common, but the good news is it can be addressed with a number of techniques. And joining me today to talk about that are Dr. Sami Ahmed and Dr. Russ Patty, both with Orthopedic Associates of Central Maryland. Welcome to a Bone to Fix podcast, Masters of Motion Edition, where we focus on the physical therapy side of orthopedics. Today, Masters of Motion tackle shoulders. I'm Amanda Wild. Dr. Ahmed, Dr. Patty, welcome to the podcast. Dr. Patty, the shoulder is the body's most flexible joint. Can you sort out or give us a basic guide of the anatomy of shoulders? Sure. The shoulder is made up of a few different bones and quite a few different muscles. The most popular joint of the shoulder is called the glenohumeral joint. It's where your humerus, your arm bone, meets the end of your scapula, your shoulder blade. And that's probably the biggest component of the shoulder joint itself. You also have the AC joint, the acromioclavicular joint, where your clavicle or your collarbone comes out and meets the end of the scapula as well. So that's kind of the basic overview of bones. I think the most common muscles or muscle group rather that people know about with the shoulder is the rotator cuff. And that's typically one of the bigger injuries or problem childs, if you will, when it comes to the shoulder. Well, it seems to me that arms and shoulders are involved in almost every movement we make. Is it true, Dr. Ahmed, that arms and shoulders are sort of involved in every movement we're making? How are they working for us day to day? That's a really true statement. I mean, our arms really do so much for us throughout the day when it comes down to things associated with lifting, pulling, pushing, pointing. I mean, we as a whole don't realize how many times a day that we actually use our upper extremities and our shoulders, specifically our shoulder girdle that Dr. Patty was referring to, is such a vital component to us being able to function daily. And one of the things that we see here at the Orthopedic Associates of Central Maryland is a huge change in many of our patients. They sometimes get injured, they sometimes get hurt, they sometimes overuse things, and that change, that subtle change to one or maybe two muscles or nerves can lead to huge cascading effects and tons of injuries down the line. Well, Dr. Patty, because shoulder is the most flexible joint in the body, it seems like that would make it vulnerable to things other joints are not vulnerable to. So it was most of what you see Skeletal, muscular, nerve, soft tissue? So the shoulder is a very dynamic joint. If you think about a joint such as the knee where it just kind of hinges in one or two general directions, the shoulder moves almost in a complete circle, a complete 360 degrees. So it leaves it very vulnerable to different injuries, whether it's a weight-bearing injury where you fall and you can injure yourself that way, or if it's just reaching overhead in your normal day-to-day life. I think one thing with physical therapy is that you kind of start to learn that it all ties together. If you have a joint injury, it never goes without a muscular injury. If you have a muscular injury, it never goes without a joint injury. So they oftentimes cross over and they affect each other very much so. And that's kind of how we develop our treatment is we do a lot of strengthening and a lot of range of motion, but also joint mobilizations. And we couple it all together. So you address all of those things, the nerves, the skeleton, the muscles, and the soft tissues? Absolutely. The nerves do more than just give us sensation. It's how we get our motor signals to our muscles to let us know, hey, this is the firing pattern that we need in order to raise our arm overhead. And What we need to do as physical therapists is break that down, and we need to find out where the deficiencies are, kind of assess how we can re-educate the body how to move, And that all ties in into more of a neuromusculoskeletal approach. Russ, I think you just hit one of the most important parts of what we do. If you look at any one of our eight locations, whether it's our Columbia office or Catonsville, where where we have the chance to do potentially some more sports-specific things, our number one thing is we're changing how people move, right? A lot of times people find themselves moving with a quote-unquote bad pattern is what we call it in PT, right? Like you take someone who's a baseball player, and common thing for baseball players, their shoulders is what we call GERD or glenohumeral internal rotation deficits, right? They have tons of mobility in one direction of their shoulder and not the other because they tend to overthrow a lot and they're hinging on their shoulder joint, which can lead to progressive injuries and changing their results and their performances and whatnot. And so, you know, your physical therapist or your biomechanical specialist who have the opportunity to work with some of our colleagues in the PA and the MD world to address 
these mobility issues to get our patients back to 100 percent or in our terms at least out of pain and hopefully if we're improving pain we're improving performance and the ability for them to do what we call activities of daily living picking up things lifting things if you can't lift up your two or three year old son or grandson or granddaughter or daughter that pain could be no different than that of a baseball pitcher in his sixth or seventh inning absolutely dr ahmed to expand on that just a little, the shoulder injuries you see in your practice, are they mostly from injuries or surgery or arthritis or some other problem? I think that with us at the Orthopedic Associates of Central Maryland, we are now part of this larger division called the Center for Advanced Orthopedics. And so we are blessed to work in this circular organization that we have a little bit of everything. We have tons of patients who are coming in off the streets and Maryland is a state that's got direct access. So they're coming right to us and saying, Hey, I don't know what I did, but I hurt my shoulder. And they can see a PT who can address whatever their concerns are at that moment. But in some cases we may start to address things with physical therapy and within the first visit or two, we'll realize, you know, there's a couple red flags here. Things don't seem to be working the way we want them to. And I quite often will refer to my physician colleagues who are working with me here at the orthopedic associates and say, you know, Hey, Dr. Polsky, Dr. Silverstein, Dr. Sydney, I've got something going on with this shoulder. I mean, I've got a patient here that I'm going to refer to you. Would you mind having that communication with me? And the beautiful part is, is that we're such a tight-knit group that they will go in, potentially see the patient, determine if an image of a specific sort is needed, an MRI, an X-ray, a CT. And on that day, on many occasions, they will be communicating and kind of having that conversation back with us to allow us to get as much pertinent information possible to that patient. So that way we can get them faster, bigger, and stronger. I and mean, we go by motto. We truly believe that what we're trying to do is build better bodies so that way people can live better lives. So Dr. Patty, what are some of the physical therapy treatment alternatives to what I would consider traditional treatment, which might be surgery? So it really kind of depends too, once you come in the door for physical therapy. A lot of doctors will say, go to therapy for a few weeks, give that a try, and that's kind of the expectation you're left with. But as Sammy and I were talking about earlier, we break down the movements and different interventions are good for different deficits. So somebody might come in and if it's primarily a muscular problem, we might do a lot more myofascial release or we might do what we call trigger point dry needling. Uh, A lot of our clinicians with the orthopedic associates are certified in that. And that's something that's emerging within the physical therapy world or has already emerged, but is becoming more and more popular. That's a pretty effective technique that we can use to help re-educate the muscle and get the muscles to function in a proper way. The other thing that we do is if it's a joint related problem and you're trying to strengthen all day, but the joint is purely limited, then you can do all the strengthening in the world, but until you clear the full range of motion of the joint, you're not really able to achieve your goal. So it really kind of depends on what the issue is. But a lot of what we do is joint mobilization, soft tissue work, re-educating muscles, how to work properly through strengthening, and then a bunch of other interventions as well. Dr. Ahmed, you said you changed the way people move to address some of these issues. Are there techniques we can do to take care of our shoulders that maybe people don't know about commonly to prevent injury and accidents? I think the first thing that I would recommend, in all honesty, is is that I feel like we go to our dentist twice a year. I still truly do not understand why we don't see a physical therapist twice a year. You know, I think that when it comes down to a lot of the movements that we're doing, we're talking about strengthening or mobilization of a certain joint or trying to get our bodies to move the right way. Well, to be completely frank, right, if you saw a specialist once a year or twice a year and talked about some of the things that you're noticing, we could potentially give you those hints or those gimmicks. And in states like ours in the state of Maryland, direct access allows a patient to come in really whenever they choose for an assessment. Now, depending on how severely they're hurt, depending on what happens, they could potentially come in and notice, hey, I've been starting to notice something's weird with my shoulder. And we can come in as physical therapists, do a full-on assessment and make that determinant that at this exact moment, I don't think you need formal care from our perspective. But Here's a good set of activities, exercises, things to avoid, posture-related, to potentially get you moving in the right direction. At the same time, what I tell all my patients to do is I am a true believer in exercise and activity and mobility. So if you're going to the gym, if you're trying to be as active as possible, we know that in today's world, a lot of people are working from home. 
people have kids to take care of. It's getting more and more tricky to get activity in. But just starting with some basic activity is usually the number one thing we want to start with. But oftentimes enough, I tell patients all the time, if you're starting to notice something or something doesn't feel right, don't wait until it's a seven or eight out of 10 to come in for an evaluation because at that point, it may be too late. It could be that you've severed a joint or a nerve or a bone to the point where we need to have surgical intervention. Now, as PTs, I know that our counterparts will probably laugh at this, but we always try to avoid surgery at all costs because we think we can fix everything. But we do also come to the point where we recognize that as strong as we can get something, sometimes a surgical intervention is truly needed. And so that's what we're lucky about, that we have these great physicians that we're able to partner with to kind of have that conversation back and forth for our patients. So pay attention to aches and pains and do something about them before they get crazy. Keep active and mobile and also maybe consider regular checkups once or twice a year with a physical therapist. 100%. I believe I love my teeth. I gladly go to the dentist twice a year, but my teeth only make up so much my body, right? My body is so big. I mean, you'd think I'd want to get checked at least once a year to make sure that everything's working okay. Yeah. Exactly. It's just a matter of getting that done, getting that as part of your routine. Dr. Ahmed, Dr. Patty, thank you so much for sharing your insights and your expertise in shoulder recovery. It's reassuring to know you address such a wide variety of issues with such a wide variety of techniques. Thank you very much for having us. It was great to talk about it. Find out more online at www.mdbonedocs.com with eight physical therapy locations for your convenience in Cantonsville, Clarksville, Columbia, Eldersburg, Ellicott City, Fulton, Jessup, and Westminster. And you can subscribe to this podcast for more insight into the physical therapy side of orthopedics. That's all for today. I'm Amanda Wild, and that was a bone that's fixed.